doing is I am color sanding this for the final buff job. Now, before we go any further, this is a 1966 GTO. We found this car in a junkyard. We took it in the shop. Went ahead and completely restored it. We finally painted it. Um, I painted three full wet coats of paint, three full wet coats of clear. Now, when you're putting that much material on a paint job, on a big car like this, you're going to get shrinkage. Doesn't matter what kind of clear you use, shrinkage is going to happen. So, to get that final buff job going, it's going to be necessary that you color sand it. Now, what you saw me do is the final sand job before buffing, and I'm going to show you that, and that's what this video is about, is what we're doing now. But before we go to that stage, the stage that you just saw me do, the main stage you're going to do is you're going to color sand this by hand with 1500. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. This is the tool of choice that I use when I hand sand the paint or the clear coat to buff. Uh, this is a waffle face, double sided. You can see one side's blue, one side's black. The blue side is softer than the black side. And it's also a flex block. So it will basically mold to the body. Another reason you want to use the waffle face is because the waffles, the holes, create a suction which will help the sandpaper hit that, hit the clear and it, it, it's a more efficient and quicker sand job. Let's take a look at the car. I'm going to show you what the 1500 sand looks like. This would be 1500 and then we're going to go ahead and talk about what we're really here for. So if we look right here you can see this has been hand sanded. This is all hand sanded with 1500 using this block right here. And then we would take some wet sandpaper, 1500, and then we would block all this out by hand, minutely and meticulously doing a little section, and then coming down here doing a little section, and then coming over here and doing a little section, and just working our way all the way down the car, section, 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 until the whole thing is sanded. This is a stage where you can buff the car if you want to. You could go ahead and use a wool pad with some rubbing compound and buff your car at this point. But the situation you have is you're going to use a lot of buffing compound. You're going to probably go on this car here, I would say you're going to go through probably two wool pads and that's a double sided pad. And then you're going to have to come back and you're going to have to use swirl remover and a polishing glaze after you buff this out. And what I'm going to show you is going to eliminate a lot of that. When I say it's going to eliminate it, what's it going to do is we're going to use less materials. We're only going to have to buff it half the time or less to get the finish that we want, the high gloss finish that we need on this car. And we're not going to use a lot of electricity. We're not going to wear and tear our buffer out. And it's just going to be an overall good buff job. And the only thing we'll have to do when we're done is we're going to have to come back after we wash the car off and we'll have to hand sand. I'm sorry, I said sand. We'll have to hand wax the car when we're done. And when we first started this video, you saw me using the DA sander on this part of the roof but I wasn't sanding this and I'm going to tell you why is I wanted to show you the difference from 
what we did here versus hand sanding. So I'm going to go ahead and take my squeegee and I'm going to go ahead and squeegee that off, let it dry. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit. There we go, just like that. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to squeegee this. And we're going to go ahead and get that down the road. See if we can get that muck off of there. All that white stuff you see is from hand sanding it, by the way. Just to let you know. And then I want you to kind of look at the finish quality on this side versus this side. Now if you look at this side, it's got a satin finish, but if you come over here, you can see that we got a gloss finish. And I did that, and I achieved that from using the product that I'm going to show you right now. The product that we're talking about here, it's called a polishing pad. Now this is a 3M product. This is the 3000 grit polishing pad. Now, I want to go ahead and show you something else here. Don't be deceived because what you see here is called step four. You don't need to go through step one through three on this. This is a 3000 grit polishing pad that will polish your clear before you buff it and it's going to save you time, time, tons of work, labor, and money by using this pad right here. you need to use that with is first of all you're going to need a velcro and you can see let me go ahead and get that off of there okay let me get a good bite of it all right you're going to need a velcro pad all right and this is called a short throw da this is a palm sander short throw da sander now what's the difference between a short throw and a typical DA sander. A short throw DA sander is a finish sander. This is designed to finish out your primer work for paint and it's also designed to use as a polishing pad which that's what this is right here. This is our 3000 grit polishing pad that you saw me polish in the clear with and it's also used for your, your final primer sand job. The reason you want to use a short throw is because it does not leave any DA marks in it or swirls. So it is very much required that you have to use this type of sander with this pad right here. Another thing that I want to go ahead and explain is that these pads cost approximately seven to eight, nine, ten dollars a piece depending on where you buy them. Let's go ahead and flip that over. I was telling you about the four steps. And this is to me, this is to me is a gimmick due to the fact that they want you to buy all these. And if you bought all these pads to do this car, it takes at least two pads, maybe three to do this whole car. But you got one that is to remove. And what that means, you're going to deburr it. Wherever you got little dust specks in it, the one's going to remove it. Then you got the two, which is going to make it smooth. Then the three, which is going to blend everything together. So what they're saying here is you take the number one and you kind of, okay, oh, we got a dust spot over here, so we're going to sand that right there. Oh, here's another dust spot over here. So that's the only places we sanded is to get those little dust specks out or whatever. Then you would come back with your smooth, and then you would kind of make a bigger section like that. And then you'd come over here and you'd make a bigger section like that. And then, what they're telling you to do is to use the number three pad, and then you would go ahead and sand it all down just like this, all right? And now what we're doing is we're blending 
all of our different layers of sanding together to make one level. And then of course number four, which is this pad right here, would be to polish it out right before buffing. By taking our hand sander and using 1500 and hand blocking this whole car, we have eliminated step one, two, and three. Because we have done all three of those steps by hand sanding with the proper hand block, the proper sandpaper, and of course using water. So now we have done a little bit of manual labor here, but we have saved ourselves 10, 20, 30 dollars times two, that's about 60 to 80 bucks that we've saved. And we have also ensured that the whole car has been evenly blocked out. We have removed all of the dust specks, all of the imperfections. If we have runs in it, we've gotten those out. And we can now jump straight in to this pad right here. Let me turn that around by using this item right here. palm sander you own is going to depend on the volume of air pressure that you use. Most sanders like this, a short throw palm sander, you don't want to use it on the highest air pressure possible. What you do want to do, you want to get a nice even, even feel, an even smooth sand job and the faster you go with this, believe it or not, the less polishing it's going to do. These are designed to use at low speed. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We're going to go ahead and try it out. And on this particular sander, here is our air, uh, this little black knob right here, that's our air. So if we turn it off, you can see that's going to be way too low. But if we turn it up into the middle, that's basically where we're going to want it. We're going to want to run it right into the middle. So before we start sanding, and I'm going to show you how this operation works, let me go ahead and show you a couple different brands that you can purchase besides spending the money on the 3M product. So if you look right here, here's two different brands of the same basically product. This is your 3M product, the 3000 that we've been talking about. You can see here's our package. And you can see that this is a little bit thinner and it's a little bit stiffer foam versus the Abrilon, which is made by Merca. You can see that this is, th this is a uh, 3000 pad, but yet on the other hand, it's got a little bit thicker foam and it will actually bend and move to the curves a lot better. And when I say curves, I'm talking about this inside curve right here possibly or as we're coming up this angle right here and then riding up this sail panel. Do you see what I'm saying? Now I will tell you from experience that the 3M polishing pad works and performs better than the Marka pad. The Marka pad is a good pad to use. I keep these for backup units if I don't have any 3Ms. But the 3M actually polishes more accurately. It works a lot better. The performance that you get out of this is a quicker, more efficient polish than the Aberlon. Once again, this is made by Merca. Now I've used other brands, but these two brands that you're looking at right here are the best brands that you can buy on the market. The Aberlon brand is a very good brand as well, but the problem that you have is that it takes just a little bit more time to use this one versus this one. Now there is other companies out there that make these pads. This is not the only company. I have never used any of the other companies. These are basically the two pads that I will use right before buffing. Now 
Way back in the day, before they came out with 3,000, it used to be 2,000, 4,000. So what I would do is I would hand sand the first, then I'd go to 2,000, then I'd polish it to 4,000, then I would buff it. But with this one here, which is in the middle, the 3,000 grit, you go from hand sanding to polishing and then buffing. So the first thing you're going to need is some water, nice clean water. What I do is I use a sponge. I take that sponge and I saturate it very well. And I also make sure that my uh, pad is saturated with water. Another thing that I want to explain to you about the short throw DA sander, make sure that it is water uh, resistant. When I say water resistant, you can use it with wet sanding uh, apparatus and it will not ruin any of the internal organs inside the machine. That's another important issue. So we're going to go ahead and plug the machine in. I got my air set where I want it, basically about right in the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my sponge and I'm going to wet down this area right here. And then evenly yet firmly, I am going to go ahead and sand this. I want to show you how long it takes. This is real time that we're watching. Very quick, very simple. And in the end, it's going to be a very, very high quality show quality mirror finish. squeegee and I want to show you the finish on that just from using my DA polishing pad which is a 3000 grit and like I said I can go ahead and go to 4000 if I want to but I really don't have to so this is from using our 3000 pad for as long as you saw me use it just now you can see that the polishing pad is already giving it a nice high gloss finish without any buff job at all. And then if we ride the fender right here, you can see this is actually 1500. This has been hand sanded with 1500 so you can basically see the difference from using our polishing pad with our short throw uh, DA sander, 3000 grit polishing pad, you can see the difference. It's a day and night difference and you can basically see uh, how much time it saves by doing this. Okay, I was telling everybody about color sanding the car for buffing. And that we went ahead and did the 1000, which that took almost a day and a half. You remember that, right? Yeah. You did a lot of it yourself. Yes. Okay, so then I told them about the 3000. It's actually 1500, not 1000. Okay. You're coming out here a little late, all right? I told them about the 3,000, okay? Before the 3,000. No, after the three, after the 1,000, we're using 3,000. I went ahead and showed them that, and I told them about that glass finish that they're going to get, and this is a polishing pad, but it's also sanding it to a 3,000 grit. What we want to do next is I'm going to go ahead, and we were concentrating on the roof so I'm going to go ahead and buff a section I want many to you can see that this hasn't been buffed but it is buff ready I want to show you uh, how quick this goes now what I'm using if many can come over here the only thing we're going to use is 3m rubbing compound that's it 3m rubbing compound and a double face wool pad so I'm going to take my wax and I want to show you how much I'm going to use here and I'm going to buff this area right in here. That's all the wax I'm going to use. 
and I want to show you what that's going to do. I got my buffer set on 1800 RPM. And we're going to go ahead and buff it out. And this is what the 3000 does for you as far as getting that high quality shine you want. So that is what the 3000 is going to do for you to make that job come out a lot quicker, a lot faster, and you're going to use one third the material. Am I right, Minnie? Yes. You can buff it at 1500, but if you go to the extreme of using that finish pad, that polisher pad that I showed you, this is the finish you're going to get. Now what you just saw is real time. You saw how much wax I used, I'm still going to go over it again, but to get the initial buff, you saw that all I used was a little bit of this. Another thing that's going to happen is you're not going to have to use your foam face pad with your polish, am I right? Yes. Because you're eliminating all your swirl marks by using less butt rubbing compound. If I was to buff this out at 1500, I would use three times more wax or rubbing compound and I would leave heavy swirl marks because my buffer would be saturated wet and I'd have to use two buffing pads to do it. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. I got a big buff job here. Um, I gotta go back over this. I see some fine scratches here which ain't nothing. But using the 3000 polishing pad, let me get that, it's way over here, is gonna make your job a lot faster, a lot more efficient and I should have this car, look how big this car is, can you stand over here? This is a 1966 GTO, I'm going to have this car completely buffed out. How long do you think it's going to take? An hour? An hour and a half? Yeah. It's going to take about an hour and a half because I took my time and spent my seven, eight dollars on a couple of these things and polished it out with my Finnish Sander DA, my short throw DA, before I buffed the car out. We'll see you later. Take it easy. And if you want a high quality job, you want to do a professional job like my friend Pete, invest in a couple of these next time you buff a car. And I guarantee you, you're going to thank me. We'll see you later. Right there. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.